Hello honeys, welcome back to my channel. It is Ashley here and in today's video we're going to be talking about all things wedding related. My favorite topic as of right now. For those of you that do not know and are new to this channel, one, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and turn on the little notification bell to be notified when I upload a new video. And two, <laughs> my wonderful fiance and I have been planning our wedding for the last four months. If you guys love this look, um, I did film it on my Instagram. Um, so it is on IGTV. So go take a look at that and I will leave my handle right here. Um, and yeah, so go ahead and grab a drink of your choice and we're gonna go ahead and get started because there's a lot of information. <laughs> Okay, so before I dive straight on in, I want to preface with the fact that I am not a professional wedding planner. <laughs> um, these are just some tips and thoughts would be beneficial for newly engaged couples who are a little bit overwhelmed. So, <laughs> um, I just wanna start off with that. Um, I think a lot of these tips and tricks will be beneficial, like I said, to newly engaged couples. And if you are a newly engaged couple, congratulations. This is the most magical time, but yes, so. Leading into that, I want to just say, once you're engaged, enjoy that time. That is my first tip. Honestly, just enjoy this time. Um, take a step back and like really just enjoy your engagement. Um, I was so, so excited that I literally started planning the day after. <laughs> and I got so overwhelmed and just like, stressed about things that I didn't need to be stressed about just yet um that I took uh, you know I took the rest of the month off Mark and I just like kind of just basked in the fact that like we were fiancés now we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend we got used to saying fiance and like we just you have to take a step back you have to look at the bigger picture enjoy that moment of you being engaged um because it does fly by it's it's insane. I can't believe that Mark and I even are like four months into planning our wedding and we're almost a year away. Like we're officially almost a year away from our wedding. And so it's just like mind boggling. Um, so that's just like something that's like really, really, I really, really want to stress. That is my number one tip. Enjoy this time. All that being said, you're going to have to have conversations early. Um, that's why I take the first month, really just talk about like what your wants and needs are. Um, communication obviously is so big in relationships and especially when you're moving forward into marriage, creating a life together. Um, get all emotional because <laughs> I love talking about this kind of stuff, but I, I deeply urge both of you to sit down, have a conversation, like what does one of you want buffet and one of you want, you know, draping or a lot of flowers or does one think music is a lot, you know, more important than something else or there are things that you're going to have to talk about right away. Um, I definitely think that as a couple, you should make a list of like what you both want in a wedding and then combine them as best as you can and if you can't, you need to compromise. Compromise is key here. I have to be happy with the vision that you've both created. This is a union. It's not, you know, not just either of y'all's wedding. This is your, the, like both of y'all's wedding. And you have to really like, uh, you have to take a step back and you have to understand that. Um, that's why I suggest having those conversations early because you don't want to, you don't want to be emailing a vendor about, you know, draping and da 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 and, or like sending emails out to um, a caterer that like just does seated dinners versus not doing any research on buffet. That is good. It's going to take you so much time to just go back and re you know retrace your steps um and that leads into the third tip um budget deciding on a budget was probably the hardest thing that mark and i have ever talked about and we we bought a house last year and that was this budget for this wedding has been a lot harder than i ever thought would be imaginable at all and yeah It is crazy expensive. Um, based on all the research that I have done, the average cost of a wedding is $30,000. No thank you. That was just not 
feasible or doable for us, um, so we have to. There are ways of DIYing your wedding, finding ways to um, have what you want without spending too much money. I full, I 100% believe that every vendor that we've chosen so far is like the best that we can have um, for our budget. And I truly, I truly believe that. Really budget that. talk isn't a fun one. It sucks. It's not great. I hated talking about it because I, there were things that I really wanted, but did, we didn't need. And that that's where those two bullets come hand in hand. Um, Budgeting is such a big deal. It's such a big deal, y'all. And I urge you to have that conversation before you start emailing anyone. To have a, that discussion about cost. Um, so I urge you, you know, the first month that you guys are engaged and like you're all excited about getting married and da da da, have that conversation. Sit down with each other and like talk about what that's why your wants and needs, that's why your needs are important at the very beginning because then you decide where where you can cut cost somewhere else. Uh, things are gonna be a lot more expensive than you actually expect them to be. Um, the wedding world is so crazy different and there are gonna be things, I mean, for us living in Nashville, um, a tent cost us about $2,000. And that is putting an example in there for you guys to be ready for quotes that are absolutely insane. I mean like out of this world, I never thought something would be that expensive, but it is. Um, and that brings me to the next tip. Um, get quotes for everything. Um, before you, obviously before you decide on any vendor, unless you've been watching on Instagram, you know, unless you've been, you know, following a photographer for a really long time and like, you know, you want them as your photographer for your wedding. By far, go ahead and book it. If that's somebody that you genuinely want and you both agree that like, that's who you want for your wedding. Um, I had no idea who I wanted to use, what I wanted to do. Um, there, I have pinned almost everything that you possibly, I feel like you possibly could pin. Um, and even then all of that changed. Um, after I started getting quotes for everything, I started focusing on, um, things here and there about like what I could take off. Um, and yeah, so get quotes for everything. If you feel like something is too expensive, get a quote for some other place. Um, I personally, I got quotes from four or five different event rental companies um, in the Nashville area. And I ended up deciding on one just based off of the interaction that I had with them. Um, and the fact that they have worked with our venue before. So that plays a huge role. Um, don't be afraid to email anyone. I can't tell you how many emails I've sent literally in the last four months. It's been so many, um, but it has been worth it. Um, I would suggest if you are going to talk to a lot of vendors, um, unless you have like certain ones in mind already, um, I would suggest Wedding Wire and Zola um, as the two apps that I would even suggest. Um, I have downloaded the, the Knot and it wasn't beneficial for me at all. I did not like it at all. The messaging system in that and that app is just not good. It's not great. Um, Wedding Wire is the absolute best when it comes to messaging other vendors in your area. Um, you get notifications, you can search easily in that app, do your budget very easily as well. You can keep track of literally everything in that app. I would suggest everything budget-wise and vendor-wise on Wedding Wire and then downloading Zola uh, for your registry, your website. Um, personally, we loved Zola better for the websites portion just because it you automatically integrate your registry. It was so easy, you didn't have to use a link, like it literally just has like this nice interface. Um, and uh, for your guest list and RSVPs, possibly the nicest interface um, on an app that I've seen. I really, really love Zola app. And then um, those are the two that I would suggest, honestly. Both of those have come in handy so, like, so much on um, planning our wedding. And like I said, if you feel that something is too expensive, reach out to someone else. Um, I've had that happen multiple times. 
Um, I have probably messaged like six or seven um, hairstylists and makeup artists for the wedding. Um, one came back with a quote that was like 600, one came back with a quote that was like 1500 for me and all my bridesmaids. Um, 600 was for the first one was just for my hair and makeup all day. Um, not including bridesmaids. Um, and then I recently found one that was half of that. She was more into the bohemian like look um, of, you know, doing updos and stuff. So I decided to reach out to her. So I'm just waiting on her to come reach out to me. Um, but I probably will be going with her because she is, she does really amazing work from her portfolio and everything. And her reviews are really great as well. That's one thing that's great about Wedding Wire. Look at reviews, see how up to date they are. Um, some people even have their price lists on Wedding Wire as well. So you can just download the PDF and it automatically pops up. Um, I also would suggest um, taking your uh, venue recommendation. Venues typically have like their own like preferred vendors or people they have worked with multiple times. Um, I would suggest um, seeing if they even have a client portal for you to check out. Um, for our venue, their own client portal that have like all these resources for couples to kind of like use. And yeah, it's just incredible. Um, I would take advantage of all resources that you have, honestly. Um, and that brings me to my next tip whether or not to DIY or buy. Um, I have realized that there are some things that we could make, but it wouldn't save us money. So what would be the point? Um, honestly, <laughs> that is the question that you need to ask yourself. So I suggest going to um, antique shops, going to vintage stores, going to like places that have literally everything, not just clothing obviously, but homeware stuff. Um, I really wanted to do one really big long table, candlesticks, so I need candlestick holders. They don't sell those in bulk anymore. They, they are very hard to find. Um, I literally scout, like literally scavenged five or six antique shops finding crystal candlesticks. And then I get to keep them for the rest of my life, so it's great. Um, and I got them for like a dollar a piece. If you feel like you can get something for less than what you could rent it for, buy it. Um, like we are going to buy all of our linens because linens are so expensive to rent. I don't understand why. Um, it cost fourteen dollars on average to rent a, a tablecloth. That.